Hey guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we're going to be talking about how to do a readathon. This is going to be a helpful guide to have a really successful readathon experience, and this is going to be geared towards my readathons, which run a little bit different than some of the more traditional ones, so we're going to talk about that first. In case you're new here, I now host seven readathons a year. They all run at least two weeks. They are all heavily themed, as I really, really love a good theme. I love a good themed party, a theme event kind of brought that into my bookish life so all the readathons have very particular themes about them and challenges you can kind of customize them to however you want but basically it's like an entire reading party all with a specific theme so the main goal of the readathon of course is to read a little bit more than you normally do for me I read significantly more during the readathon I focus way more on the reading than I normally would in just my like day-to-day -day life but I also look at it as kind of like a reading party a reason to kind of jump into the theme I'll do activities that revolve around the readathon theme. I'll make food or find foods that revolve around the theme, watch particular movies, and of course read books that all revolve around the theme. You don't have to do any of this to participate in my readathons, but I am going to be talking about some things to kind of make your readathon experience more enjoyable and more successful. Disclaimer, reading one book during a readathon is totally fine and amazing, especially if that's more than what you normally do. I make the readathons two weeks because I feel like that just makes it more fun and gives us more time in case things kind of come up during the week to get more books in. I personally read usually like 7 to 14 books during the readathon. I do most of mine on audiobook, but I get one or two physical books in. I do a lot of shorter books. I like having like a large amount of books read during the readathon. That is my personal goal. You can make your goal whatever you want it to be based on what your lifestyle is like and just how you enjoy reading. I personally do really good with having goals in mind and I work mostly from home so I'm able to do a lot of audiobooks and things like that. So my readathons all have reading challenges. Those are always in the announcement video. I usually do five reading challenges and it will all be based around the theme of whatever the readathon is. Sometimes I will do physical challenges. I usually do this for hikeathon, which is in the spring. It's kind of like a fitness slash nature themed readathon. So I kind of encourage us to like do more walks and kind of get up and move around after you've read for a while. And then the challenges for that are really, really fun. I also have physical challenges for not so scary a -thon, which is my fall. Halloween themed readathon because I like to do a lot of Halloween fall activities. Same goes for Jingle Bellathon, which is Christmas related. So sometimes they have physical and reading challenges. Again, you don't have to do a single challenge if you don't want to, but I encourage you to because it does make it extra fun. The reading challenges in particular make it really fun because you have to kind of scavenge your shelves to find books that fit the challenges or use your local library or Kindle or whatever you can find. And I always have recommendation videos, TBRs, and usually a haul as well based on whatever the theme is to give you lots of ideas. What makes my readathons a little bit different is we also do photo challenges, which I'm seeing more readathons do this, which I love. So we heavily participate on Instagram. My Instagram will be right here. Be sure and follow me if you haven't already. And we have a photo challenge for every day of the readathon. You do not have to do this to participate, but if you're already on Instagram or if you want to make some friends or if you want to enter my giveaway that I'll talk about in a second, you can do the photo challenges. You can do some of them. You can do one of them. You can do as many as you want. The photo challenges will also center around the theme of the readathon. Some of them will be the same as the reading challenges. You'll just take a picture of the book. For example, for randomathon, one of the reading challenges is to read a book with a Ferris wheel on the cover. And one of the photo challenges is a book with a Ferris wheel on the cover. So sometimes they correlate, but we have a lot more of the photo challenges. I do host a giveaway for every readathon and the photo challenges will count towards the giveaway. This is for 18 and older and US only, just because shipping is so expensive to do outside the US. Every time you post a photo for the photo challenges, you will get an entry into the giveaway. Just make sure that you tag me or send me the photos because Instagram changed the hashtag and sometimes I don't always see them. So if you see that I have not shared your photo in my stories, because I do that every day during the readathon, whatever the photo challenge is, I will find as many of the people participating as I can and share them in my stories. So if you see that I haven't done that yet, you can just send me the photo or tag me or let me know because I always want to share everybody's photos. It's a great way for everybody to connect and I love seeing how creative everybody gets. Okay, so now for the official tips for the readathon. Tip number one is to request, purchase, and borrow your books early. I do 
a lot of audiobooks on Libby, and I will go about a month before the readathon starts, which is about when I do the announcement, or at least three weeks before, and put in requests for any audiobooks that are not currently available that I want to read for the readathon, or I'll try to find them on other places if Libby doesn't have them. You can always delay your hold, so say you put in a request and it comes in like a week later, you can hit deliver later and pick 7, 14, 21 days, and it will come at a later time, but that way you have your place in line and you're not requesting a bunch of things like right before the readathon and not being able to get them. Same thing kind of goes if you're going to request physical copies. I get a lot of physical copies from the library even though I do mostly audiobooks just because I use them for photos. Sometimes I want to look through and see if there's photos or graphics in the books as well. So I will go and request any of the books that I plan on reading from the library and that way I have time to get them in advance. Tip number two is to read shorter books. Now this is specifically to those of you that want to read a lot during the readathon. If your goal is to just read more than you normally do, say you read 20 minutes a day and your goal is to read 40 minutes a day, that's awesome. But for those of you that like to kind of push yourselves and want to read more books, reading shorter books really helps. It also keeps me motivated for the readathon. I feel like if I read the same book for like five to seven days, sometimes I will lose my desire to like push for the readathon specifically. So I will pick shorter books. I usually try to pick audiobooks that are under 10 hours. I listen to double speed so it's like five or six hours for me to listen to them. Because I mostly work from home and I can listen when I'm not working from home, I can usually get like one audiobook in every day or every other day. I don't mind this. I really like it. The audiobooks keep me company while I'm working and cleaning and things like that. So I try to stick with 10 hour audiobooks, preferably like eight to seven. Young adult is really good for this as well as middle grade. And then I always get some graphic novels because those are really fun and they kind of break up the bigger read. I usually keep my physical books under 350 pages so that I can try to get one in per week. I usually try to get one physical book per week. So I keep it a little bit on the shorter side. And that just helps you get more in. Again, this is personal preference. If that's not your goal, that's totally fine. But I do advise against picking like 20 hour audiobooks or 600 page books for a readathon, unless your goal is just to read that one book for the readathon. Because personally, I just think it's more fun if you get a couple more in. Tip number three is to change your schedule slightly. So getting up an hour, half hour earlier, or going to bed half an hour or an hour earlier really, really helps. I usually read more before bed than I do or in the morning. But if I'm able to get up a little bit earlier, even just 30 minutes a day, cut out a huge chunk of your physical reading and it kind of keeps the momentum. If you can kind of set a routine, this really helps for the readathon. Of course, you want to like keep it fun and not stress yourself out because the point is just to have fun and read some good books. But setting a little bit of a schedule can really help. And when other people are kind of doing that as well, kind of helps us motivate each other. Tip number four is to connect with others. So if you can join in on Instagram, as I will be sharing, everybody posts. Everybody will be posting and sharing and talking about the books they're reading, what they're going to read next. And I feel like this just really keeps kind of like the vibes of the readathon going. To me, they kind of feel like a holiday, like Christmas and Halloween, because everybody's doing similar things. And I feel like connecting with others and kind of having that community will really keep the readathon fun and just creates like a really good environment. Tip number five, to take the photos in advance. My tip for this, if you want to get all the photo challenges in, is to take the pictures in advance or at least some of them in advance. That way you're not kind of stressing out the day before or the day of or if something happens and you're not able to do it, you'll have them ready to go. Instagram now allows you to schedule photos in advance. I think you can schedule them up to a month in advance. I personally will take a lot of the photo challenges in advance so that I can have more time reading and also connecting with people. This is a great way to make some Instagram friends and get some more book recommendations. So I just like to do it in advance so that when the photos go live that day I can interact with everybody a little bit more and also read and not have to try and figure out what photo I'm going to do tomorrow and where I want to take it and all of that stuff. You don't have to do anything fancy. You can literally just hold up a picture of a book by your bookshelves outside, whatever you want to do. I usually try to make the background kind of themed as well. This just makes it more fun for me. And because I'm the host, I try to make them like a little bit more exciting to look at. But taking them in advance, or at least some of them in advance, is very, very helpful, especially if you feel like you might have a lot of other things happening that week. So that's a little tip for that. Tip number six is to plan an event or an activity. Again, this is personal preference. If this is not your thing, you can skip over this tip. I like to plan like an outing or like a small little event. It's themed around the readathon. It just kind of keeps like the whole vibe and atmosphere of the readathon going. So like last year for Galaxy-a-thon, I had 
my brother and sister and husband and I all went to a space themed speakeasy and we all dressed kind of like spacey and then afterwards they came over we got pizza from this place called Killer Pizza from Mars and then we played space themed board games. Of course I wasn't reading during any of this time but it was so fun and it just kind of keeps up the activities and involves other people in the readathon even if they're not reading. So you can also do something very small like making some food at home. One year I made a space themed cheesecake for the readathon so it doesn't have to be like a big grand event but I like to do a few things like this every year for each individual readathon. Tip number seven is to listen to the playlist. So I have a playlist for every single readathon that I've created and I add to every year. I love these so much. Always loved creating themed playlists and it was so much fun finding songs that fit each individual theme. Some of these songs are like from my youth and they bring out all of the memory and the vibes and then some of them are ones I've never heard of but I wound up totally falling in love with. So make sure you check out the playlist. I usually link them on any announcement video. I link them on Instagram. It's always done through Spotify but if you don't have Spotify you can create your own playlist as well. So I usually like to turn this on like first thing in the morning while I am commenting with people on Instagram and kind of connecting and sharing their stories for the day and it just kind of sets the mood and the tone and I love it so much. Tip number eight is to create an ambiance. For this I try to link ambiances on YouTube that you can put on in the background while you are reading your book. They usually have very chill music so it's not distracting and very cool like imagery and stuff that just kind of submerses you in whatever theme you're doing. I particularly like this for Galaxy a thon or like Christmas and Halloween. Put on a little ambience and you sit down and like read your book and it just makes it like a cozy fun time. Tip number nine is to go at your own pace and don't compare to others. We all have different lifestyles, different goals, different desires, different types of reading, different abilities to get books and audiobooks. So while it is very tempting, when you see somebody reading a lot more than you, don't beat yourself up over it. You have no idea what their lifestyle is like, whether they're doing audios or shorter books, whether they've always done this or whether this is something new. Set the goals for yourself and your personal lifestyle. If you're working 80 hours a week and you have three kids and you got your mother-in-law coming in town, you're just not going to be able to read as much as some other people and that's totally fine. You want to set the goal to be personal and to like cheer each other on, but just keep in mind that we all have different lifestyles and we have different goals and ideas of what we want for the readathon. So this is very helpful. And then the final tip is to make the goal for the readathon to have fun. Of course, a lot of us will have goals for certain numbers that we want to hit. That personally motivates me more than it stresses me out, but the overall goal is to have a great time. That's why I share ambiances and playlists. I want to kind of immerse you and make it like a holiday reading party experience, kind of take you out of the real world and just give you a reason to be silly and do things you may not have done before, have some new experiences with books or activities or food. So the overall goal is just to have a really, really good time. And if you did that, even if you didn't even finish a book, then you're successful. Okay, you guys, save this video for future readathons in case you need a refresher. Share it with any friends that participate in readathons. A lot of these tips will work for other readathons as well, but this is more designed specifically for the readathons that I do with all the different challenges and everything. Let me know which readathon you are most excited to participate in down below in the comments. We're getting ready to kick off 2024 with our first one. I'm really excited about it. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the Bright Side Girl if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time on the bright side.